Hello and welcome to question 8a. So question 8a is actually a differentiation question. Uh, you may not know it, but uh, the gradient function actually is dy dx. Right? You might be wondering why do we call dy dx the gradient function? Well, first of all, you need to think of function. Again, I hate to sound like a broken record. A function actually is very simply just a machine. Right? So if you feed in an input, it gives an output. Now a gradient function is a machine that tells you the gradient. So what you do is you put in values of x and tells you what is the gradient at that value of x. Isn't that what dy dx does? When you substitute different values of x into dy dx, you get the gradient at that exact point. Yes? So the gradient function in this question is just dy dx. So what we've got to do is apply quotient rule. So given this, uh, you can go ahead and differentiate and you should get this answer negative 51 over x minus 9 all squared so this is part one of the answer because we need to find the gradient function next we should be able to determine whether this uh, equation given to us y is it an increasing or decreasing function now an increasing or decreasing function just means the graph is it going downwards if it's going downwards then it's a decreasing function because as x increases y decreases we call it a decreasing function or if as x in increases y increases that will be a, an increasing function so over here looking at the gradient uh, function we can see that it's always negative why is it always negative here is my argument i can say that let's look at the denominator the denominator is x minus 9 all squared this is always going to be positive it could be zero when x equals to 9 but the question has assured me that x is not equal to 9. So knowing that, I can say that x squared, uh, x minus 9 all squared is always positive. If that is always positive, then the fraction negative 51 over x minus 9 all squared will always be negative. And guess what? That is our dy dx. That tells me that dy dx is negative. The gradient is always negative at any point of the graph which is quite interesting if you think about it, right? Meaning that if I were to draw a tangent to the curve at any point, it is always sloping downwards. What does that tell you? The graph is always decreasing. Yes? And from that, we can conclude y is a decreasing function. That is the answer for question 8a. Now let's look at question 8b. We have an integration question. For 8b, uh, we're supposed to, you know, Find the region bounded by the curve, the line x equals to 3, and the x-axis. So that is the area in green. So to find the area in green, we just need to integrate uh, natural log cube root of x from 1 to 3. Yeah. So how do you know this is 1? Because natural log... Oops, sorry, let me change the color. Right, this is always 1. Yeah. Natural log of 1 is equals to 0. So there you go. So if you do this, then what you get is integral of y dx from 1 to 3. So you do integrate natural log of cube root of x. We can do a bit of manipulation. Move this. Uh, this is cube root of x, so that's x to the power 1 third. I can move the 1 third out of the integral. Then we integrate natural log x from 1 to 3. So if you integrate natural log of x, you get x natural log x minus x. You evaluate that from 3 to 1 and you get this answer, natural log of x. Oh, sorry, natural log of 3, my bad, minus 2 thirds. The only problem is we have not learned how to do this yet. Right? In our syllabus, we do not know how to integrate natural log of x. Then what are our options? Now let's first look at what is the meaning of integration or area under the curve since we're doing a revision. So to find the area under the curve, what we're actually doing is we are summing up rectangles. So if you look over here, right, each of these rectangles have a fixed width of delta x, right? And what I can do is I can pick out certain points. For example, let me choose a color, purple, right? I can find the value of uh, y at this point, and this point, and this point, and this point, and this point. So the area of the first triangle here is delta x times y1. Let's call this point over here y1. Yeah, because it's actually a rectangle. Uh, I just need the height times the breadth. Delta x, y1, and say this is y2. So this second triangle will be delta x times y2. So what I'm doing is I'm summing up all the x times yi. Yeah, 
x times y1, uh, sorry, delta x times y1, delta x times y2, so on and so forth. And if you let delta x become smaller and smaller, so that it becomes what we call dx, that's where you have, uh, you know, the integration as the area under the curve. Now, what's stopping us from doing it, you know, 90 degrees rotated this way? Yeah, we could do it this way if we want. And that is the idea that we're going to apply here. We're going to integrate this curve x dy instead of our usual y dx. Okay, so what's going to happen is you can think of this as summing up rectangles again. Right, so maybe this value belongs to x1, this value belongs to x2. So what you're doing is you're summing up rectangles of delta y times xi, where you can have x1, x2, x3, and so on and so forth. And as delta y becomes smaller and smaller, it becomes dy. Then this whole thing becomes integral of x dy. Yeah, this is uh, what we call the fundamental theorem of calculus. This is integration. So let's do this. First of all, I would like to change right, my equation given here with x being the subject of the formula. How do I get this? Let's look at the working at the sides. If y is equal to natural log of, uh, let me change color, of cube root of x, I can move the one third out, multiply by three on both sides, and take exponential, take e on both sides, that will give me x equals to e to the three y. Next. When I substitute x equals to 3, when I substitute x equals to 3 inside this first original equation, I'm going to get natural log of cube root of 3. Now, again, I can move the cube root sign to the front, so that's 1 third natural log 3 here. So I'm going to integrate uh, from y equals to 0 to y equals to 1 third natural log 3 of um, x dy. Yeah, so here you go. This is just to find... Um, this area over here, right? But bear in mind that this is not the answer that we want. The answer we want actually is this region over here. Huh? So integrating this gives me integral of e to the 3y dy. Now integrating this is quite simple because uh, we just need to divide by 3. Yeah, Getting this. You can do a quick test. If I differentiate this, would I get back this? And the answer is yes. Okay. Next, let's substitute these values in. And evaluate it, you get two thirds square units. Meaning that this area over here, let me shade it with say green. It doesn't really come out. Maybe I can use this. This area over here is two thirds square units. The next thing I need to do is find the area of the entire rectangle, right? The area of this rectangle is length times breadth. So three times one third natural log three. So the required area is my rectangle, 3 times 1 third natural log 3 minus 2 thirds and that will give us the exact same answer as before if you had known how to do the integral of natural log of x, which by the way is what you're going to learn next year if you're going to take uh, JC H2 mathematics. Yeah, and the answer if you want to give it in 3 significant figures is 0.432. I hope you found this useful. Uh, if you have any questions, do drop a comment below. And I guess I'll see you in the next video.